What's going on, YouTube? This is Marcus Martinez. Make sure everything looks good. Phenomenal. I'm going to just move a couple things here. I'm going to get on the Instagram Live as well as we're going to be doing this kettlebell full body workout. It's going to be very fun. I'm very excited. All right. I'm going to go live on here. Don't for I'm right here. I'm right here. I won't forget about you. Let's start this. What's up? This is Marcus Martinez. I'm putting stuff in here so that way you can find me. Uh, I got some fun stuff in store for you today. We're going to be doing a full body conditioning focus workout. So time this one foundation of flow. And I know flow gets people a little scared. They're like, Marcus, I don't really want to flow. That just, that's not what you do with the kettlebell. It doesn't have to be as all over the place as you think it might be. All I want to do is create these uh, complexes that we'll be able to transition very quickly from exercise to exercise. So it's going to be about a 30-minute workout. Very pumped for this. Put a lot of uh, work into this. And then at the end of this, I will stick around and answer some questions. So the way this is going to work, we got three main blocks. We're going to be going through three exercises each. We're going to do them straight sets, or sorry, in a circuit, back and forth. And then on the last set, we're going to combine it together into a flow. Not it's not true flow, but that's okay. It's more of a uh, fluid complex that is going to allow you, like I said, to just uh, create these like really tight transitions so it feels like one movement. It's going to be really good for conditioning purposes, and it just, it's why I like to kettlebell. It's fun. Uh, so we'll go three through, those, or through those three times, and then we got a little swing finisher, and not 100 swings. It's going to be some variations. What I also want to take this opportunity uh, to do is to help educate you. So I'm going to be giving you some regressions, progressions throughout this, so that way I can give you some tips. So if this, if you're brand new to kettlebells, you can absolutely incorporate this workout. If you've been around the kettlebell block, you can see some regressions that will help you if you're a trainer, and also if you want to uh, level up your uh, kettlebell training. So we'll start this off with a very, very brief uh, warm up. We're just going to do three exercises shoulder openers, some spinal waves, and then some rotations. So, stay up nice and tall. We're going to go into bring those arms up. We'll go into some corkscrews. I said shoulder openers. Damn it, I already gave you one of the exercises. That's okay. We're going into corkscrews back and forth. So, we'll just go about three or four reps here. Then we'll go into the spinal waves, and then we'll go into the last one. So, we'll go three times through this before we get through this workout. So, Let's talk a little bit about this workout as I'm talking about spinal waves. Make sure, the number one thing I want you to do is work within your abilities. Do not do something that is either brand new for you or doesn't feel comfortable. So work within your abilities. The second part of that is if you are gonna work within your abilities, make sure you're choosing the appropriate weight. So don't be a hero, don't go too heavy. Also don't be a villain, I know it's the opposite. And go too light. So very often, I would put programs out, and I would put a little bit long. There's not gonna be long rest here, but I put longer rest periods because it was either strength focused or hypertrophy focused, something like that. People were like, "Oh, it's too easy. I went through the workout in 20 minutes." Well, yeah, you use a 12k when you should have been using a 24k, and that goes for everybody. Most of my clients were able to go way heavier than they thought they could, and uh, that's how you're gonna elicit the actual change that is going to help you build some strength with kettlebells. Even though, all right, let's do this again. Even though this is a conditioning workout and I'm not helping the uh, stereotype that kettlebells are only good for conditioning, the reality is a weight is a weight is a weight, a tool is a tool. So as long as you pick the appropriate load for the exercise that you're doing, you will build strength. That's just how it works. Spiral waves. Uh, right back up. Flex, round, pull your shoulders up. I like this warm up because it's only three movements. Get you going, especially when you're in a hot garage. But just kind of primes and joints, you can take a little bit longer. You can go through every joint complex, spend 10, 15, 20, spend three hours. I'm not your dad, do what you want. But just make sure you're not overdoing it. I think some people spend a little bit too long on the warm ups and then it kind of detracts them, distracts them from the workouts. So like I said, if you have any questions, you can pop them up there. We'll be going through a little bit of rest. I'll be glad to answer them um, as we go. And if there are more technique uh, questions, then I'll answer those at the end. Spinal waves. 
If you're new to kettlebells, maybe you're still calling them kettlebells, maybe you got them during 2020 when you couldn't find anything else, I don't care, I'm glad you're here. But make sure that your technique is down. There are so many great kettlebell coaches, there's so many great courses, there's so many great programs, there's so much good stuff out there. And when I was teaching my course, I've been teaching kettlebell courses for over 10 years, and I would always recommend people go through a wide variety of courses so that way you can see the differences, but then you can also see the similarities, and then you can kind of make it your own. All right, let's grab a very lightweight. We're gonna do two more things here. We're gonna do some halos, uh, alternating halos, just to warm up the shoulders a little bit more, and then combine it into a chest supported deadlift. So, or chest supported good morning. From right here, pull the kettlebell in, chest support good morning, so we can pattern the hinge, we can kind of take inventory, how's the shoulder feeling, maybe a little sticky, maybe a little crunchy. So we'll take a little bit more time there. But I really enjoy halos. When I was young, dumb, and full of fun, I would do halos really, really heavy because I was an idiot and I would just be like, yeah, halos. And I realized, wait, I don't need to do really heavy halos. Just doing nice controlled halos is a great way to strengthen the shoulder complex through multiple ranges. And there you go. All right, the last thing we're gonna do before we get through the first block, we're gonna practice a little tension and fluidity. So what I want you to do is I want you to create as much tension as possible. So I want you to just oh, find yourself on the ground, grip the ground with your toes, stand up nice and tall, get into a posterior tilt, so just that little pelvic tilt right there, but still maintaining length. I want you to breathe through tension. So squeeze, create as much tension as you can. Grip the ground, ah, crack a walnut wherever you're putting the walnut. Breathe through that tension, don't hold your breath. And shake, shake it out. And I like doing these drills before my classes and before courses just to reiterate that you're gonna be applying a lot of tension during these different movements. And sometimes you're gonna to have to do it during a movement. But the main thing is that you're not holding your breath. Because what's the first thing that would, my clients would do if I was like, all right, get tense, they'd be like, that's not gonna work. That's only gonna work with you passing out. So, so one more time, create a lot of tension, squeeze, grip the ground, the toes, crack the walnut. It's in my armpit. Get your freaking head out of here. And shake, 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 shake. All right, so even though this is flow, we're gonna get a little bit creative, add some rotation. We're gonna keep it very simple in terms of the exercise selection at first, just to get everything nice and prepared. So. This first set, we're gonna be working unilaterally back and forth. We'll work left side, then right side, left side, then right side. And then we'll take a quick break. We're gonna go two rounds through that. And then we're gonna combine them all into a little bit longer flow. So if you have a beautiful array of kettlebells, whether they're competition or cast iron or wherever they are, uh, that's fine. I would definitely uh, use the appropriate weight. So maybe for the clean, you can go heavier. For the squat, you can go a lot heavier, but then the press you have to go lighter. Just pick the appropriate weight. We'll have about 10, 15 seconds between each exercise transition. And then for the last set, I'll talk you through that. So let's go. We're gonna go 30 seconds. Uh, the first round, again, it's gonna be a regression into a progression, we'll go a little bit simpler. So we're gonna go dead start clean. We're gonna stick to one side. So you're probably going like, wait, I thought we were gonna do flow. Easy, Daniel son. We will build up. We will build up. But right now, I just want to make sure we've got these basics down. Do I understand the basic tenets of these kettlebell ballistic movements? In this case, the bell is not slamming. We're not gripping the crap out of the bell. When I say time, you're going to have a 10, 15 second rest. Time! 10, 15 second rest, shake it off. Take inventory, what's the bell slamming? Do we got to smooth it out a little bit? What do we got to do to make it a little bit better? All right. Other side, so we're working alternating unilaterally. Fancy way of saying one side at a time. I swear. Sometimes, sometimes I wonder. All right, make sure that you're in that rack position, nice and strong. Abs engage, glutes engage. Slight flex of the wrist so that bell is not doing this. We've all seen people do that. Don't be that people. Keep that tension as you're moving through it. Time. Shake it off. All right, feeling good. We're gonna go into squats next, single arm front squats. <clears throat> so 
In terms of positioning here, if your bell is too heavy, you can always put it up onto the shoulder. I don't recommend it because then it's just gonna take away from what the focus is, but I want to make sure that you're doing it. All right, right in those front squats. Nice, again, and controlled. Going to the deck that you feel most comfortable with. If you're like, I get to this position and my knees and ankles and everything starts to hurt, first off, let's not load that. Let's practice on some mobility. And then again, working this, the uh, depth that you feel good with. We're talking about quality, not just quantity. First quality, then quantity. Time. Shake it off. So this first block, super simple. Cleans, squats, presses. We've all done that right. If you're confused at this point, perhaps you're on the wrong page. But if you're not, you're like, you know what? I'm just interested in kettlebells. Then... You're here. You're here in your family. What is that? Olive Garden? It's not brought to you by Olive Garden. Oh, so as you're doing this, try to keep that vertical forearm. You can come in slightly. What I want you to avoid is that external rotation here. Squeeze. Woo! Single arm front squats. They ain't no joke. Oh man, that was one of Aaron's favorite exercises. Shout out to you, Aaron. All right, let's go on to presses. So, press right arm. So we've gone right side, left side, right side, left side. We're trying to be as controlled as possible. Do not just go through the motions here. If you can't do the exercise, maybe you have to go into a push press. If you need a little momentum, that's totally fine. Ooh, I'm already feeling this. It is not exceptionally good. So we're doing 30 seconds of work, about 10, 15 seconds of rest, more like a transition than anything else. Sorry, I talked to you too. 10 seconds, of, 20 seconds of work, 30 seconds of work, about 10, 15 seconds of rest. Oh, I got my camera crew here. Shout out to my tripod and my pile box. Always hold me up. Keep that tension. So what I would rather you do is lessen the range of motion. So if you get to this point and you find yourself trying to access that overhead extension or overhead position from your lower back or mid back, then just go as high as you can maintain that alignment, as high as you can stay vertical. I put the hand on the rib just to avoid that hyperextension. Woo! That was round one. Nice and simple, as I said. We're doing clean, squat, press. Uh, we're gonna do that one more time, and then we're gonna combine them into a flow. And by flow, I mean we're gonna move a little bit faster through them. So if you're brand new to KDs, stick to the basic movements, go lighter if you have to, and then you can always ramp it up. This is a lifelong process. I got my first kettlebell in 2006. I went through my first course in 2000. Seven, 2008. Good God, it's been a while. So don't try to rush the process. There are, like I said, great coaches, great courses to learn technique, but you got to take that time. You got to let it marinate. You got to practice those skills. You got to, if you're a trainer, you got to train with people. It's not enough just to take a course, understand how to do something, even understand how to do it well for yourself. How can you teach others? If you're not a trainer, who can you train? You, you have spouses, you have children, you have friends. Try to train people. That's going to make you an even better practitioner on what you're doing. All right. Enough jibber jabber. One more time. So now we're going to do a full clean, not a dead start clean. Ready, set, go. So if you're still on the clean level, keep doing with cleans. But the goal here is to master that hip extension with that vertical pull. So what tends to happen, hip extension, the weight keeps going. So just remember, vertical pull. You can always use this hand for support. Let that bell rotate. It's not like a barbell where it comes up and over. Nice job. Keep it going. And shake it out. Loose grip. That loose grip is going to be paramount to making sure that you don't jack up your forearms and then blame me, which I'm just going to blame Kettlebell about kids. All right, clean. Nice hip extension into that pull. 
get that nice little float so the bell rotates around the forearm. We're getting that top position. We're not letting that extension happen. Nice job. I'm assuming you're not just sitting there having a breakfast burrito. You're actually doing the workout. Maybe you're doing it with the breakfast burrito. Who am I to judge? And pull that up. Nice. So if you're starting to feel any pressure in the lower back or that's turning into maybe some pain, double down on that tension on your abdominal wall. Keep that intra-abdominal tension while moving. That's going to help balance the load. And if you have any questions on the tubes of you as well, fire away. All right, right back into the squats. Oh, like I said, full range of motion. Keep that tension to the tension. Nice. Oh, I will say it is really fun to start doing heavier and heavier uh, single arm front squats. This is one of those exercises that when you get really strong at, man, the carryover is B A N A N A S. Uh, English is not your first way. language. It is uh, nine nines. Check it out. Other side, last set of squats. Uh, stand nice and tall. When you're in that top position, one of my biggest pet peeves for squats is this hyperextension through your lower back, through your hips. Like, ah, uh, what are you doing? There's no load coming laterally. The load is vertical. So at that top position, just try to create tension. Yeah. Rather than like hip snap. I don't know. I don't get it. Check it out. Last set of presses. We'll take another break. And then we'll fluidify that, which is another word. It is hot in this garage. All right. Right back up into that press. Pull that weight down. That was one of my favorite cues from uh, Pavel back in the day was when you're doing presses to actively engage your lat and pull the weight back down rather than just dropping the weight down. If efficiency is not your goal, like you're not doing, you know, a billion jerks and you want to be as inefficient as possible, then create as much tension as you can. Pull, actively pull that weight down. Siri, I'm not talking to you. Do not times. You think I'd be smarter and turn it off? All right, that's it. So, even though this is a conditioning workout, you can absolutely turn this into a strength workout. It's full body strength. You just manipulate the sets, the time, the rest periods. Oh. And uh, make it work for you. <sighs> Pull that weight down. Actively engage. And time. All right, take a quick break. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get a little bit fluid in this. So I'm going to set the timer. And we're going to go back and forth on this. So we're going from a clean into a squat into a press. So we're going to stick to the same side. And then we're going to switch. So for the first half of it, we'll do a dead start clean. So you can do a switch. Second half, we'll do a switch clean. So that way you can kind of see, again, get some ideas on how you can incorporate this into your training. All right, so I'm gonna set the timer for a minute. Oh man, this timer is like 20 years old. I'm pretty sure it's 20, but it's gonna be good. All right, so now you might have to go a little bit lighter. So maybe that heavier weight you could have used for the cleans, Maybe the squats are okay. Now, you might have a little bit lighter since we're going to be going through this thing. Ready, set, go, clean, squat, press, dead start clean, clean, squat, press. And now we're going to flow through this. Now, remember, not quite flow, but again, the goal is just to be fluid. How can we create uh, Nice smooth transitions. All right, now we're switching with this uh, switch clean. <sighs> clean, squat, press, drop on top. Clean, squat, press. Whew. So you can see 
how those movements blend so well together. Almost there, 15 seconds. You can tell us a second because I'm not talking. Oh my goodness. That. So you can see again how we start combining things to turn them into a much more fluid experience where you don't need to start doing rotational snatches and all these crazy things, which I absolutely love and I think have their place. But how can we do it in an accessible way that's going to allow people to feel confident enough to start doing those things, to start thinking outside the box? Ooh, it's warm in here. <sighs> South block one, we're gonna go into block two next. If you have any questions, let me know. So we're gonna get a little bit more complicated. Not too much though. Hope you're enjoying. I said if you're eating your breakfast burrito, if you're deciding not to do the workout with me, it's all good. I've been doing the same. But we'll save this on here and I'll have it on my page as well. Which is kettlebell exercises. Uh, spoiler alert, lots of kettlebell exercises on there. All right, next one we're gonna do, we're gonna do a dead snatch into a lunge into a half kneeling windmill. So that's gonna be the, the regressions for the first round. The second round, we'll go into an actual snatch with the hip extension, I mean both have hip extensions, with the forward momentum, uh, into an overhead lunge, into a half kneeling window. So we'll go a little bit shorter on this, we'll go 20 seconds. All right, ready, this is our snatch, go. And mother, lover, there we go. So if snatches are really new to you, one thing I like to use as my cue is if you've got the clean, you've got the snatch. You can practice the height without having to overcommit. You got commitment issues, it's all good. You can practice the height to where you feel most comfortable. And then that way you can gauge how far you go. Because one of the main issues with snatches is going overcommitting, going too hard, and then letting that bell come up and over, slam you in the forearm, and then you give kettlebell snatches a bad name. So there's no pressing in this. The goal is to get to that top position, to that overhead, uh, that overhead position without pressing. So again, gauge it, go a little bit further. And I'll address one thing about the snatch during the break. Shake it off, because the question that always pops up, Marcus, do I need to go over my, over the top? Can I go rotation? Like, Ah, we'll talk about later. All right, let's do an overhead lunge. So if you can't do overhead lunge, just do a rack lunge, but make sure that you're lunging back with the opposite leg that's loaded. So if you're lunging with the right, or if you're racking the right or overhead in the right, lunge with your left leg. I love overhead lunges. This is one of those exercises that is phenomenal for shoulder strength stability. I know strength is stability, but you know what I'm saying? core strength, and just full body strength, and definitely creates the need for a lot of balance and control. Ooh. Check it out. We'll do the other side. So this is block two, if you're just joining us, we're doing a kettlebell workout. I don't know if that was obviously apparent that that's what we're doing here, but in case you're not sure, that's what we're doing. All right, let's bring that weight up. Overhead lunges. Now I'm lunging back on the opposite leg. So what this is gonna do is gonna open up the hips, so that way when I get into that half and windmill, I'll be prepared for it. And for the first round of the windmills, we'll do it chest support. Time. All right, so we're gonna do half and windmills next. So we're gonna stay on the ground in that half and position. So first and foremost, we want to make sure we understand what's happening to the upper body. What we don't want to happen is try to excessively rotate and then start rounding. So keep that extension through your mid and upper back. That way, as you drive the hip back and rotate, that's going to allow you to maintain enough tension to keep your back safe. So we'll do this chest supported on this first one. 
If you don't have that overhead mobility to do this, hold it at the chest position. Ready. Pull it here. Pull the hips back. And what I like about this, and you can hold a little bit lower so it's more like gut supported, and that gives you that kinesthetic cue to maintain tension. You're not going to have a, a soft belly while you're pushing some iron against it. So I'm dragging my hips back and rotating. So if I were to pick a position, I would think about a 45 degree angle. So not directly back, not directly laterally. It's going to be about a 45 degree angle for that bend press. And that goes for half kneeling, for standing, any position. But there's going to be other position. <laughs> Seated windmills. <sighs> Seated windmills are when I drop my gear and I feel like I'm down again. All right, ready. Bring it up. Drive that hip back. So as I'm doing that, notice how knee, uh, that shin is going to stay very, uh, fairly vertical. So what I want to avoid is letting that uh, hip start to rotate and letting that heel come up. The goal here is to focus on the knee that's up that hip and then your obliques and just tight torso. Tight torso is getting some love there. All right, so this is block number two. This is a snatch, a lunge, and a half kneeling window. That is the circuit. So we're gonna do one more round of that uh, unilaterally back and forth. I'm saying unilaterally, they're all unilaterally. As long as they have a single kettlebell, it's one, assign, one side at a time. But on the last round, we'll do the flow. So we'll combine it into, and I, I like this one. It's probably one of my favorites. <sighs> all right, check it out. So now we're doing snatch, full snatch. If Dead Star Snatch is where you are to live, then that's where you stay, stay there. If you want to add a little bit more intensity, that's your uh, If you want to add a little bit more intensity, we're going to go full snatch. All right, ready. Round two. Fight. So, going full snatch now. So, if you're a kettlebell sport practitioner, this is a different form altogether. You can do the corkscrew method where the bell comes, rotates around. You can do that up and over method, assuming you the technical know-how and the awareness. So just make it work for you. I find that teaching people when they were new to kettlebells, doing that corkscrew, it helped them understand the timing, the mechanics um, versus the up and over, which I felt like I was just banging my head against the wall, trying to teach it to people. And it would work like 6% of the time, and a little bit more sometimes, but there was a, definitely a, a bigger uh, margin of error. So as you're pulling, you're pulling vertically, there's that float that allows you to position where that bell goes, as opposed to the bell finding a spot on you, which we don't want. That's no point now. All right, overhead lunge. Go back to the right side, so we're going right, left, right, left, or left, right, left, right, whatever, whatever you're doing. Bring it up. So we're going to lunge back opposite way. So if I got my right leg up or my right hand up, I'm going to lunge back with my left. That way it opens up for, prepares me for the uh, windmill. And uh, one of the things I think about when I'm doing flows, doing kind of flowy complexes, is how can the next exercise prepare me for, or how can the next, uh, yeah, how can the next exercise prepare me um, ahead of time? So in which way am I lunging, in which way am I catching the bell, in which way am I stepping. I always kind of want to be prepared. I want to think like one step ahead. That was a very non-eloquent way of saying, try to prepare yourself for the next exercise. Right back in that lunge, make sure knees tracking over toes, both feet. We tend to think about that front foot, but we don't think about that back foot sometimes. Make sure knee is over toe. No ex excessive rotation. Right. Back into windmill. This time we'll go overhead on this. And then we'll switch sides and then we'll flow. We'll blow it out. All right, so to start off, maybe you just touch the ground. Just get used to this position. Keep that tension. We go a little bit lower. Whew. Go a little bit lower. And remember, as we get down, try to keep that uh, vertical shin angle. And maintain that breath, that connection. All right, other side. 
and back down windmill to finish off circuit number two. Uh, set number two. Ooh, I'm getting sweaty. I'm getting sweaty. Time. Windmills are new. Like I said, go back to the chest supported. Go to the low hanging. Go to body weight. It doesn't need to uh, look exactly the same. There's a reason that I'm giving you so many variations because I want you to be able to find what works for you. And also, not just what works for you, maybe you have the technical know how, but you're fatigued or you're already, I guess, you're fatigued. You're excessively sweaty. You gotta lower the weight. Maybe instead of lowering the weight, you find a regression that uh, allows you to keep going. All right, so now we're gonna get fancy. We're going into flow time. Uh, so we're gonna do a snatch into an overhead lunge, into a half kneel and windmill, and then we'll switch. So the first couple rounds, go slow. Just get each one, get each movement. Stop it. Slow me down. Give me water. All right. So we're going to work back and forth. Right side, left side, right side, left side, back and forth. Ready? Set. And go. Remember, we're lunging back with that opposite leg. Well, we've got the windmill. Right back into that half kneeling windmill. Go ahead and stand up. Switch. You can do dead stop. You can do. Dead start, you can do a switch snatch, but the goal is to be fluid, so I'll do a switch snatch now. Switch snatch, snatch, snatch. Woo. I really like this one. This is probably one of my favorites. And once you start getting into the motion, then you can start combining them almost into one fluid piece. So notice how I'm switching and stepping almost simultaneously. Oh, Woo uh, that bell just starts to float. And then you're doing this by yourself and you're doing this with maybe your favorite music. You're not listening to my dumbass. Then, oh, Woo. that is a tough one. And the other way that you can use this workout, there's so many different ways, but you can also just take each flow, practice that flow. So at the end of each of these blocks, take those flows, turn them into its own workout. So it's just going to be the flows. Oh, all right. Last block before we get to things. This mother effort. We're going to do a rotational clean into a side lunge, into a shoulder opener. So we did the tougher variations with presses and windmills. I like shoulder openers as a way to, again, just build some stability through the shoulder through multiple ranges. So I'll just show you what that looks like first. You're gonna hold the bell in the rack position. I want you to think elbow lifts up as high as possible, and then torso rotates. So this is the shoulder opener. So you can use this as a primer before pressing, um, I like to use it more as like a finisher. I don't know why I air quoted finisher, because we're technically almost finishing with this. But we're going to be doing a rotational clean into a side lunge, into a shoulder opener. So we're ready. Let's go one at a time. Rotational clean. So with the rotational clean, you're going to rotate. You're going to come cross, pivot on that back leg. As you catch, catch into a square position. So don't rotate all the way with a full uh, rotate, full, full turn, full pivot. All I want you to do is pivot off that back leg. So this leg is freely pivoting. That front leg will pivot, but I want you not to worry so much about what the weight's doing. Focus more on pivot through your ankles, knees, and hips to really uh, just get yourself into position. All right, nice and simple. And what I found with the rotational plane, especially this dead start rotational plane, is a lot of beginner clients, they actually got this faster than traditional uh, kettlebell cleans. And I'll explain in a second. Because you're looking at like rotational, that's more advanced. And while you're not wrong, adding rotation is going to require some more uh, proprioception awareness, but 
because the bell is rotating around the form, which if someone's new to kettlebells, they're not used to that. They're used to a dumbbell, a barbell, something that's fixed. So there's no added rotation. So the fact that the bell's rotating around and I'm rotating my torso, it just creates this nice whole body spiral that makes it much easier to control. I like this. I like this mucho. So, and I'm not here to say adding rotation or getting the flow is like the pinnacle kettlebell training. You can absolutely keep it super basic. Keep it swings, clean, squats, get ups, whatever the hell you want. But as long as you're doing that because that's what you choose to do, and that's not only the only thing you know how to do. All right, let's go into side lunge. Not quite a classic, so we're just gonna go down as low as you feel comfortable. And I brought now as low as I feel comfortable. Uh, so if you got some steep cog mobility, go all the way to classic, and then go into overhead, that freaking insane person. Whew. All the way down. Same thing, just make sure knees are tracking over toes. It's the most important thing here. So, yeah, I like this right. There's so many movement patterns. It's challenging. We're working multiple planes. We're working all three planes here. Uh, I think one of the uh, missing links in a lot of people's training is side lunges. Just building adductor strength. We're so focused on bands and building external rotation. We're building our glutes or glute knee, but don't think about it. Building that adductors. Uh, building that strong growing. I hope somebody came in right at that time. They just came in, heard me yell strong growing, and they just left. What the hell is happening at Kettle Kings? Who is this guy? All right, shoulder openers. So you're going to stand square. You're going to do the shoulder opener, rotate through the torso, but still maintain that tension. Ready? Shoulder opener, rotate, and then back. And this is a great one to prep you for bend presses if you so choose to do that exercise. Full. Position all the way back. Try to get your tricep to your lat. So when you get into that back position, I'll be deciding on this one. And remember, if you got any questions, go ahead and ask, and I'll answer them at the end of this. Oh, shoulder opener around. I forgot. All right, all the way up and back. So see, I'm trying to bring my tricep all the way to my lat, and I'm creating this little bit of a hinge. So. You're not going to stay completely vertical as you do this. You're going to kind of lean into the bell, which is what I want you to do. Oh. Oh. Shout out to my lack of chalk. That is making this excessively more difficult just for you. All right. So now we're going to go a little bit faster. So for that rotational clean, I gave you the dead start rotational clean. Now we're going to do a full rotational clean. Where that bell does not touch the ground. And then uh, side lungs will keep the same, same with shoulder opener. So if dead start rotational clean is where you're at, fantastic. All right, ready, set, and go. Full rotational clean. Now, if this is brand new for you, two hands, and then you can even slow it down just to get the momentum. But remember, the focus is not the bell. It's not necessarily the upper body. It's about your ankle, your foot position, and then how that pivot is going to allow you to transition exceptionally smoothly. One time Aaron, he told me, because we just shot so many videos together, he's like, every time you shoot, you come in like you're gonna say something loud, and then you just, and I can't not see that now, and now neither can you. Ready, rotational clean, go, across the body. So again, if this is new for you, you're like, Margaret, you're gonna take out your knee. No, I'm not. If you are going to use two hands, control that weight so you understand the position that you're in. So I'm gonna need a towel right now. My hand is driven and seen. All right, I'm back. All right, so let's go back into those side lunges. Convenient shoelace tie. Right, ready. 
right on the side lunge. So I'm just going to stay in that wide position. I'm going to stay here for both sides. And for most people, that's going to be challenging. For most people, just getting into this width is going to be challenging. So even if that's all you've got, that's fine. There's so much excessively stupid debate. Oh, partial range of motion is bad. Partial range of motion is good. But, you know, just work within what feels good for you. It's so like, if it doesn't feel good, don't do it. Work your way up to it. If it feels good, then go ahead and do it. That was very hedonistic. If it feels good, just do it, man. Everything's going to be awesome. Uh, not everything. Just with your workouts. Uh, I to go deeper, sit back. Oh, good thing I'm not working out today. Do the workout. All right, shoulder opener one more time. And then we'll go through the full flow on this one. And then we'll finish off with uh, some swings. Oh, it's a good workout. Damn, I'm already, what are you, 40 minutes with five minutes of talking? I mean, it's been 40 minutes of nonstop talking. But at this point, I you're either loving it or you've muted me. All right, shoulder opener, pull up and back. So now we can be a little bit smoother with this. What I'd also recommend is watch that tension on that opposite shoulder. So if you find yourself creating excessive tension here, get a little bit more rotation and then just loosen up the tension through your neck. If you're like, oh, tight the whole time, that's just going to exacerbate things and you're gonna feel that on your traps. Uh, which right now you're feeling all this on your traps. All right, shoulder opener. And back, that's tight. Uh, back. So if you had to use a lighter weight for any one of these, it's all good. Just make sure you're working within your abilities just outside of comfort zone. Ah. All right, now, my favorite, we're going to flow. So the first half of this, we'll do a downward rotation, and then we'll go into that side lunge, into the shoulder opener, and then we'll start to speed it up with the two hand or with the rotational clean. If you want to get super fancy, do a little hand switch with that rotation. It's good times. I love when I post some kind of flow stuff. And every now and then I'll get, typically not a comment, but I'll get a message like, oh, this is just for the crowd, stupid, super, super human tricks. Like, what is a stupid human trick? I mean, if, unless you're doing push ups and pull ups and that's it, and squats, everything else you're doing is excessive. So, why not do things that you enjoy, things that you find that you get value from? For me, adding in flow, adding in rotational work with the kettlebells has an extraordinary, extraordinary amount of uh, carryover. All right, well, let's do this rotational clean into the side lunge, stand up into the shoulder opener, bring that bell straight down, rotational clean, etc., etc. And then I'll show you how we can flip it. Not flip it, flip it but how we can get some rotation in there. All right, set, go. Rotational clean, right into that side lunge, right into that stand, right into that shoulder opener. Bring it right down the inside of that foot, rotational clean, go through the garage door, stand up. Right in that shoulder opener, right down the inside of that foot. Boom. So, the way I like to really incorporate these combinations is like the snatch lunge, like this rotational clean. Notice how I'm going to start lifting my leg before I catch. So that way I can transition into that, that movement a little bit easier. And right into that side lunge. Oh. And right back, down, and back up. So now we can keep this momentum going, and then turn into a side clean, a rotational clean, into that side lunge. Oh, we're gonna do one more. Into that transition, rotational clean. Oh. Ooh. All right. So. That was, you know what? I'm gonna do one more. That was the workout. That in the swings. We'll do, uh, we'll do a couple rounds. So we'll give you one, one set of swings. I do like showing this one variation. So if you did nothing else except those three blocks, those three complexes, it's a phenomenal full body workout. 
So I shortened the rest periods, use a much lighter weight so that I can keep it going a little bit faster, make it more conditioning. But this is one of my strength workouts. So you just change the load based on you. So for those front squats, go two to three times heavier. For those presses, maybe turn them into jerks. So this is essentially the same workout that I have on my full body strength, but I'm just tweaking it to make it more conditioning. So, all right, let's do some swings. I'll do three rounds of swings, quick rounds, uh, just to go through them. So we're gonna start with a chest supported swing. We'll go into a compact swing, and then we'll go into a full swing. All right, we'll just go for about 20 seconds each. But like I said, you can use the, the flow part of that. So it's three different ones. Once you understand the movements, I'll have it all written down on here. Once you put that on there, I mean, you can go through just those flows and then just cycle through those. One minute on, three minute, or one minute rest, two minutes rest, 30 seconds rest, depending on what it is. You can absolutely make it work for you. That's what I want with this. Make it work for you. All right, swings. Let's start with chest sports swings. So if you're brand new to kettlebells and you understand deadlifts, this is where you're going to be uh, starting. Ready, and bring it in. Hinge, snap. Hinge, snap. So, a few things here, and I talked about this so many times, but make sure you're not hyperextending. The beauty of having the bell right in front of you is that it keeps you connected to your anterior core, your front side, your abs, so that you're keeping that tension and you're focusing your attention on the front side. When you have that cue to make sure you stay tight, that is going to help balance out the load so that you don't put excessive pressure on your lower back, which is what typically happens. I was just at the gym the other day, I won't name which gym, but people were doing swings and they're letting the bell swing out front, they're controlling it all the way down, doing this like weird scoop, I don't even know what they're doing. It was like without anything, you'd think you were at a club, but make sure you're keeping things engaged. So having that chest supported, great way to do it. All right, next one we're gonna do, we're gonna do a compact swing. So you're gonna keep your arms tucked. As you come back, keep your arms tucked. As you stand up, Keep your arms tucked. Such a simple, it's like stupid simple on making sure you pattern the hinge and then you can kind of play around with the explosivity of it, how fast you go, but not have to worry about the timing because we see that a lot. I see a lot of people swinging and they stay in this anterior tilt and they get to the top and they're not fully committed with that posterior tilt and then they hinge a little bit too soon. So this allows me to really focus in and hone in with my client on just that hip extension or the hip hinge, that hip extension, flexion extension. So making sure that bottom position, you're going to answer your tilt, we're nice and open, but we're still focusing on hamstrings and glutes, we're not just bent over. And the top position, we're going to post your tilt, a lot of tension. All right. Oh, shut up for a second. So, tuck. And what's cool about this one, I have my kids do this one because we're getting 90% of the benefit of the swing. And uh, we can and we can even slow it down. So if you use a light enough weight, you can just focus on that fast concentric. So it's kind of like a modified cable pull through. And then you speed it up. And now the other thing you're doing is at that top position, you're super engaging in your lats and in your upper back. So you're keeping that extension through your thoracic spine, through your upper back. So rather than what a lot of people do, which is start to round under the pressure of the weight, they can maintain the tension all around that musculature that's gonna keep you in that extended position. So when you're doing a lot of rows and control movements, I'm all for adding some flexion, scapular movement. But when you're doing ballistic stuff, I want to lock it in. All right, last one. Two hand swings. So the great debate, do I bend my elbows? Do I straighten my arms? They're both variations. Straighten the arms is going to be a little bit more difficult because it's further away from your body. I like to bend my elbows so I have a little bit more control. I can really focus on rotating, pulling my shoulders down. So the main thing there is as long as you don't have bench elbows on the way down there. So, whoo, we did it. World's best cup of coffee, great job. So that was the workout, we save it on here. Let's just stretch, stretch it out a little bit. If you had any questions, I will answer. If you didn't have any questions, I'll shut up. I'm just gonna do a little, I like to stretch a little bit, that was the most, Old man stretch at the end of a workout. Whew. Ah, great job. Toe touches and smoothie. Yeah. So hopefully you enjoyed. Thank you, PJ. Thank you, Drew. Judy. Of a girl. All right. So 
you have any questions, let me know. Uh, that, was, that was a lot, so um, if I can find it, it's always fun to be sitting here. It's the fun part of the live, like your face, like right up in there, looking at the screen. Uh, I like how you break, yes, that's, and I have been teaching this thing for a long time, and I have very simple breakdowns. My goal with any one of my courses, I mean, I've been teaching kettlebell courses for a long time, since 2011. Uh, and my goal was to make it as simple as possible. Give you all the tools you needed to be able to incorporate or do that exercise without overcomplicating it. And with that said, I still do teach for two days or you know, when I was teaching the courses. So it was a lot of talking. There was a lot of granular getting down to that nitty gritty stuff. Um, but at the end of the day, for most of us, if you're a trainer, how can you get your clients to do exactly what you want them to do in as simple a way and as few words as possible and if you're not a trainer, how can you understand that movement and then be able to apply it as quickly as possible? You know, we have the luxury of social media where we have so many things to see and so many things to try, but we're maybe not fully uh, competent in those movement patterns yet. So how do we shorten that gap, but still put in that time? So that's with everything I teach, I try to make it as simple as possible. Any courses that I have, any courses that I have coming up, it's all about how to simplify. Uh, anything else? I hope you all enjoyed. Make sure to check out, so you can check me out at Kettlebell Exercises. God, like I said, spoiler alert, a lot of kettlebell stuff. Um, but make sure you check out all the awesome live coaches on here. We got Maverick. Uh, so I'll like go right over that. Shout out to you, Maverick. <laughs> anyway, so that's all I got. Thank you again so much for joining me. I'll save this on here. We'll save this on here. So that way, I'm going to end this one right here. Boop. And then there you go. And then I'll end this one right here and we'll say.